Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. To my fellow members on the NCP page, the Legacy of Malcolm X page, Islam 101, Greatest Africans in Our History, and to members of the page uh, that encourages uh, more Dean and less Fitna. I've uh, read something recently, and I don't know how true it is. I've read that nine Somalis, in one story I read it was three, or I read a story about three Somalis, which was later said to be a rumor, and I read a reference to nine Somalis, both of these cases being uh, occurring in Egypt, um, having to do with organ trafficking. And as I read these cases, um, well, I not really read much about them, but as I read the references that were written, I must say that um, I did go angry. I grew very angry. And I don't apologize for my anger as a black man. Uh, there is the stereotype of the angry black woman. Some people don't even use the term woman when they talk about the stereotype. There is the stereotype of the angry black man. And I am an angry black man and I'm an angry Muslim. And I don't apologize for it because my anger is right and the complacency of the complacent is wrong. My anti-racism and my anti-white supremacy is right and the complacency of those who are complacent is wrong. The white supremacist thinking and ideas and the inferiority complex with which many of us uh, are stricken is wrong. The idea that white is even normal is wrong. Except when you're talking about genetics and DNA. European DNA is as normal as anybody else's in its climate for which it is suited. But many people who call themselves Muslims have the idea that they're normal. I don't mean the Muslim, I mean they have this idea that the white European is normal, that everybody else is abnormal and is missing something and needs to strive to be like them. And the only thing I can give him credit for is that they are very well organized, but they aren't necessarily a standard. <clears throat> They're not something to strive for. They're not an example for the rest of us. They're not our teachers. Many Muslims um, who are not Caucasian view the Caucasian as someone to become or they consider themselves Caucasian. I'm going to introduce a very radical idea to the Muslims, but it needs to be introduced. I know Muslims who are Caucasian. And when they accept, they accept 100%. They're not playing around. The dangerous um, Muslim to the Muslims is not the Caucasian who accepts Islam. Now there are spies of any background. I mean there are spies that they may come from a Christian Arab background and they pretend to accept Islam. There are spies that may come from an African American background. Spies that come from a Caucasian background. Uh, and they pretend to accept Islam and they spy on us and they probably get busted anyway or they quit spying. But they're not the biggest threat to us. The biggest threat to us is not even the Caucasian that accepts Islam. They're not some threat. When they accept Islam, they accept it wholeheartedly. We've seen it. They do not entertain the thought of their supremacy and superiority over other races for a minute. Now, the first Caucasian in America to accept Islam um, after the U.S. was, uh, was in fact a country was uh, Muhammad Russell Alexander Webb. And he is quoted to have said some things derogatory towards the Muslims of India, the brown Muslims. He is quoted to have shown no respect for them. But I must say that uh, that's a one-off. Since then, I've seen them accept and there are times when you might, when, when the Muslim community comes under attack, sometimes they're the most vocal defenders. You may have to tell them, calm down, man. Before you start talking bad about the Kafir this and the Kafir that, remember, your mom's a Kafir. 
Your grandmom's calf, or if you don't like, if you think the term calf is an insult, which I don't, then you may have to remind them, wait a minute, your mom's Baptist, your grandmom's Baptist, your dad's Baptist, your granddad's Baptist, they, have, they don't hate you, they haven't turned you out, or maybe they have, which is one of the reasons why when they accept, they come into it wholeheartedly, and they're not playing. I give it to them, they're not playing when they come into this. Our biggest threat is the Muslims who have inherited Islam from generations and generations and generations going back more than a thousand years and they've taken on white supremacist ideas. And these Muslims are not even Caucasian. These Muslims come from the Arab world, from the subcontinent, from nations neighboring the subcontinent like Iran and Afghanistan. These are them, and they are coming in with these ideas of white supremacy. Now, I've heard that there's some Bosnians who are racist. I've heard about this. Uh, I don't know how true it is. I only heard the rumor once. I met Bosnians who are not racist. And my closest friend from Bosnia, um, does not seem to have a racist bone in his body. There are times that uh, I have been at a masjid and I did not see him before he saw me. He saw me first and he came to me and spoke and said hello, said salam alaikum. Somebody's racist is not going to do that. They don't come to you, generally speaking, and speak to you before you even know that they're there. If they can hide, they hide. Well, now, I admit that I'm not the darkest of black people anyway. Although I joke and say that I am for uh, reasons of humor, I admit that I'm one of the palest members of our race. But politically speaking, those who know me are not allowed for a second to forget that my origin is African. I'm not even with African Americans who say that, Af that black Americans ain't African. I'm not with them. They can say that we're American, that's true. Yeah, if we were forced to be. Yeah. But the, uh, when they say we're not African, they lose me. I'm not even with them. I'm like, uh-uh, slow your roll, bro. No, no, I'm from black tropical rainforest, mama Africa with the big nose and the big wide lips and uh, the big feet and the names that people can't pronounce. I'm from that part of Africa. I'm not just claiming Africa. I'm, I'm claiming the hottest, humidest, most tropical, blackest part of Africa. I'm from the parts of Africa so black despite my shade. And I, I got the research to prove it. On my mother's side, I'm from the parts that are so black that if the lights go out at midnight, planes can't land. That's the part that I'm from. And so, with me not being that way, I understand that somebody might be racist but still find me acceptable. I get it. But I've seen how they have accepted others too. I've seen how they accept the authority of people darker than them and even defer to them at times because when somebody with an inferiority complex from the subcontinent comes to them and tries to put them in positions of authority prematurely, oftentimes they're the ones who say, wait, slow your roll, I'll do what I can to help, but um, is this fair to other people who have been here longer than me? Am I the spokesperson for the masjid now because I speak English fluently or is it because I'm white? I've had a sister who was Caucasian. She was from the same city that my father is from. She knew my grandfather, or she knows who my grandfather is, or was. And she's from that city. She accepted Islam. She married a brother from Gambia, pitch black. And so as to not have a half Caucasian child, she was done with her bloodline. They adopted a child from Gambia. That's how committed she was. That's how against white supremacy she is. She wasn't even having her own kids. She said, we'll adopt. That's fine. Now, I don't know the full story beyond that, but they adopted. And when the principal of our school who is and was from Syria, came to her and always praised her for her hard work. She told me one day, Brother X, it's true I work hard, 
But I actually don't appreciate her compliments for, the, for one reason, they're not sincere. She's not complimenting me because I work hard. We all work hard. She's complimenting me because I'm white and I'm sick of it and I'm leaving because I, because she's got these racist tendencies and I don't have time for that. What kind of Islam does she have? Does she think God is white? I said, wow, this is a militant sister. But this is where the Caucasians are coming from. Mind you, this lady is from a town in Texas. She accepted Islam before you could even get away with that kind of thing in Texas, being white. When they're committed, they're committed. My hat goes off to them. The sad thing is now, we got a lot of people that ain't Muslim because they racist. Now there's two ways to be racist and call yourself a Muslim. Only one of them is real. If a Muslim has a racist idea and he admits that he's wrong or she's wrong, and that's got to go, then that is a Muslim with a sickness and they've admitted it and they have a hope of being cured, beating this thing. It's like any other monkey on your back, you might beat it. They have a, a hope of this, but now you take the, um, the Muslim who doesn't even feel like they're doing anything wrong. No, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Muslim, but these, these slaves, the Abid, calling us slaves. Well, what names do you have for white people if you're going to call us slaves? That's the Muslim. And see, the thing about it is that every time a Muslim is racist, they're racist against darker people, including black folks. It's always in that direction. Some people say, well, no, there's reverse racism. Well, that, like, that's reverse, but that's not racism. That's a bias, but that's an overreaction. It's not actually racism because it doesn't come with the power. But every dog on time, you find racism in a Muslim's heart. It's against the darker people. But when these folks have these ideas in mind, consciously or subconsciously, and they don't even admit that these ideas are wrong, that's a kafir. I'm putting it to you. We should start calling them kafirs and hypocrites, apostates, straight up. Treat them like somebody who spied on the Muslims. Treat them like that. If they won't take correction. And I'm, I hate to say this, but most Arabs who are not black Arabs, uh, visibly speaking, consider themselves white. But most of them do not want to take any correction about racist ideas that they harbor even though they don't harbor them consciously all the time. I've realized that in North Africa, quite a few of them consciously harbor these ideas, although they try to escape the discussion of it. In the Gulf, they harbor these ideas subconsciously because they don't have a conscious concept of hatred of, based on race. They can't, consciously, they can't understand it. Subconsciously, they get it because they watch TV. But what both of them have in common, whether they're from North Africa or the Mediterranean or whether they're from the Arabian Gulf, is that they do not want to accept correction. They do not want to have a discussion wherein they are told about themselves and the disappointment that they are since they hold themselves up to be the leaders and the vanguards of the Muslims. Like Islam needs them because they can speak Arabic. They don't understand that there's going to have to be a very lengthy conversation amongst the Muslims about specifically white supremacy and what they need to do to get rid of it. And how we can cause the harborer of these ideas to become a kafir, a hypocrite, and an apostate. All of these things that are not nice to call somebody. These are words that we can't throw around like that. We gotta be careful when we Muslims saying so, so and so is a hypocrite, so and so is a kafir, and therefore an apostate. We gotta be careful about this. But you got to know what it is that nullifies somebody's religion. What nullifies the shahada? We got to know this. Now, we Muslims, we've been real careful to avoid making takfir, and that's good. The problem is we're not careful to learn what causes takfir, what causes kufr in a Muslim, like abandoning the prayer, lack of Allah wal bara, spying on the Muslims, siding against the Muslims with our enemies, things like that. Magic. Certain things, uh, not ruling by the laws of Allah. These are things that cut it. These, these do it. These cause the doer to exit Islam. Well, what's the other one? There's a hadith in a tabari. And if I could hear a sheikh correctly one day when I was in a class, the sheikh told his class 
that much of what is in um, Sahih and Bukhari is summarized in At-Tabari. Or he said the reverse. I don't know which one was the summary of the other one, but he said that one was the summary of the other. So if you read At-Tabari, then either it is the summary or it is summarized in Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. The Hadith said, whoever goes with the oppressor, knowing him to be an oppressor, has gone forth from Islam. From Islam. And there's a hadith that's, that, that um, says that the one who hands the oppressor a pen is also an oppressor or is aiding the oppressor. The Muslim, in short, is not allowed, if this hadith is correct, the Muslim is not allowed to side with the oppressor against the victim. You can't do it. So you can't say that the Rohingya deserve the slaughter that they're going through in Burma. You can't say that. You can't side with the, 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 the Buddhist Burmese against the Rohingya Muslims. Not even in your heart. If this hadith is correct, that makes you a kafir. Maybe nobody knows about it. But if the hadith is correct, the person who has this idea is a kafir. As a matter of fact, I'm telling you now, if I meet you, you Muslim, and you're from one of these places, and you have the idea that the oppressor is equal to the victim, that means that if you think that the white kafir is equal to the black kafir, I got problems with you. I got doubts about your religion. Now that's just talking about the kafir. And I won't pray behind you. And I won't call you brother or sister. And I won't let my kids marry you. I wouldn't even let my son marry you. If you a lady and my son comes to me, I'll be like, no, you can't marry that person. Uh-uh. Because I don't know. I can't tell you that they're Muslim, son. I got doubts. I got reason to doubt their faith. I don't have proof, but I got reason to doubt it. They think that white folks are our equals. The ones who oppressed us are equal to us whom they've oppressed. The ones who are sitting up here eating our resources that we worked for, that they didn't work for, are equal to us while they overwork us and underpay us and oppress us like this. That they are equals. Now the ones who don't oppress you, you can say that they're the equals of those who they don't oppress. But you can't sit up here and say that the one who oppresses you is the equal, that the society who benefits from the oppression is the equal of the society that it is oppressing for its own benefit. Or even has oppressed while continuing to benefit. We Muslims got to start becoming militant against this. And I put this to you, Muslims of any background, any origin, it is no longer enough for Muslims to try to be colorblind. We can't. The Kufar and the Muslims are blinded by color, but not colorblind. So it is now required. The Muslims must stop being just not racist. And they need to start being anti-racist. And this might divide the Muslims. But God damn it, if we're going to be divided, that's a good reason for us to be divided. Oh, you racist and I'm not. Or you can kiss my behind. I don't come to this masjid anymore till you change your ideas. We need this. We need to start dissing even some of our own relatives behind this mess. Oh, wait, slow your roll. So you're going to sit up here and tell me that when the white guy came to take shahada to your masjid, you wanted to make him the spokesperson. But then when the brother took shahada at your masjid, you didn't want to go shake his hand and trade phone numbers with him. Because you were afraid he going to come and ask you for money later. Well, damn. <laughs> you racist son of a bitch. We need to start doing this even with our relatives. Because I'll tell y'all a little, another little secret. Caucasians who accept Islam, they love the brotherhood. We all appreciate the brotherhood, but they're getting sick and tired of seeing the, equality, the inequality in this brotherhood. They're getting sick and tired of seeing African Americans who accept Islam get less of a welcome than they got. They're getting sick and tired of it. And they're Caucasians. But when, like I said, when they come into Islam, they come into it. They accept it. They're not playing around. They're sick of it. They know their family's going to drive them out one day. Oftentimes it happens. And they wind up needing help sometimes because their families turn them out. They're getting sick of this. They see some of this racism and this inferiority complex and white supremacy on the part of the Muslims, and they're sick of it. They're tired of it, just like the black folks are. And some, when you, you might wonder why. Some of you have noticed this, where when somebody from a Caucasian ancestry comes and accepts Islam, you stop seeing them at a particular masjid, but you know they're still Muslim. 
Because you see them, but you don't see them at the masjid. Why? They're going to the masjid with the black folks. Because they're ready to accept black folks as equals, and we're ready to accept them as equals. But when they go to you, you come, with them, come to them with this submissive inferiority complex, and they're tired of it. They know, they, don't, they know that they're not better than you because of their origin. Maybe because they accepted Islam and got a lot of sins erased, maybe. But hell, you can repent and get the same thing. But they're getting sick and tired of seeing this white supremacist. Oh, thank you, Master, for accepting Islam and giving us credibility. Now, can you please teach your people about Islam so they'll accept too? They're looking at you like, hold up, man. What about... I mean, they're looking at you and they're saying, wait a minute, what about the one... Uh, what about Junebug? who came to the masjid, and he became Jabbar, or Jabbar. What about him? You didn't say to him, well, go back and tell your people about Islam. You know what? I'll tell you this, too. And this is really going, uh, I'm going to tell you this about, uh, mainly to Arabs. Those of you who have pro-egalitarian, which now means pro-black ideas, because if you're pro-equality, that means right now you got to be pro-black because we're the ones suffering from the inequality. you got to be pro-Rohingya, who are the darkest people in their region because they're suffering from inequality. You usually got to be on behalf and for the darkest of the people in their particular region because they're the ones who suffer the most. But those of you who have this understanding and this wisdom, like one of my brothers in Tunisia, like another brother who's in Egypt, I don't know which city, um, and who was shown appreciation for Malcolm X, if you're one of these guys, then I'm, I extend my full sympathies to you. Because I'm living in an Arab country right now with Arabs, and I can tell you, they brainwashed. I'm lucky, I live in the Gulf, where most of it is subconscious, and there's some ability and hope of them being corrected, some ability and some hope. More than if I were in one of the poor Arab nations where, oh, they, they hold to that racism when they have it. They keep it. They never let it go. I'm better than the slaves. Miss me with that mess. But you get my full sympathies. However, I'll let you know that I'm offensive to your family. Your family members who don't see it your way, don't see it my way, are not going to like me very much. Because we black folks should not forgive anybody who calls us slaves, straight up. To hell with forgiving them until they stop and they say, you know what, I was wrong, I shouldn't do this, I should not have done it. Forgive me because I'm turning over a new leaf, I'm changing and that was wrong. Until they do that, don't forgive them. If they ask for forgiveness, sure, but if they don't ask, don't forgive them. Take them good deeds from them. Give them some of your bad deeds. That's what they deserve. A racist father muckers. We don't have time for this in our ummah. We don't have room and space for this. We got other people attacking us of any origin. Other people who are oppressed but they're not Muslim have found it convenient to attack us now so that they can take some of the oppression off of them. This is something that, that is beginning and it's going to continue to get worse. What business do we have? Where can we afford to sit around here and start uh, siding with the oppressors against each other? We can't. We can't afford to side against any victim that's not Muslim, let alone other victims who are Muslim. So we don't have time to be forgiven for the sake of unity. No, no. If you are Muslim and you think that white folks are anything superior over black folks or anybody else, we don't have time for you. You'd be doing us a favor if you left Islam and went to the church because you are dead weight to us. You're holding the rest of us back. You don't need to go and tell black folks, well, you know, white folks are equal too. You don't got to tell us that. We're the ones who suffer from a self-hatred and an inferiority complex as well because of what they did. The difference is we're starting to fight against that. You're not. Most of you all are just tolerant of it. And the few of you who are awake, you're conscious, you're aware of this, and you want to get rid of it, you know the sacrifices you have to make because you got to fight against your families. Because they won't do it. They won't accept it. Start, you know how it is. You go to somebody's wedding. And one of the people getting married is black, and everybody else starts talking. Oh, he married a black woman. Or, oh, she's marrying a, a black man. Why? 
you here to talk. It's not fair to you. Because when you say, what the hell does that matter? They're Muslim. Shut the hell up. They start getting on you about it like you stupid, like you wrong. We don't need them. Because one of the biggest problems with these racists, these goddamn cuss word racists in our ranks, is that when you tell them about themselves, then they want to interrupt you so that you don't correct them. They don't want to shut the hell up and let you tell them how screwed up they are. Some of them deserve to be physically beaten, put in the hospital for this. I remember I told somebody one time, you know what? After they used this word slave, and I said, you country terrorist, you towel-headed Bedouin. Now, you see how those words felt? I know you're not really like that, but you see how they felt. Well, that's what it's like when you call us slaves, even if you say you don't mean an insult. So what? Well, you know, we don't mean it when we call you towel heads, but do you like it? No. That foolishness right there, and they tried to interrupt me. They started trying to cut me off, and I told them, see, you're stubborn. Now you don't want to admit you're wrong. That's why I got two relatives who left Islam. They told me, but well, I was stupid for them to leave Islam. Instead of saying, well, dang, we screwed up and we shared a blame, they said, well, that was dumb for them to leave Islam. My best friend told me, look, Brother X, don't get mad at me because I'm not saying this about you, but I consider them to be dumb for what they did. So I said, okay, I told you I wouldn't get mad now. I didn't get mad. I'm telling you, I consider your whole culture to be stupid for, for supporting this and for pushing and provoking this. Yeah, what they did was stupid. Your culture's stupid because you all can't see how you share the blame. You caused this problem. Because not only do you say the wrong thing and do the wrong thing in disregard of the Muslims without realizing you're doing it, when I come and tell you or when someone else comes and tell you, y'all start interrupting, cutting people off, saying the same most stupid bull, uh, BS. Oh, no, no, Adi, Adi, Bilal was black. We don't mean any harm. We're all the same. There's no difference between white and black. That's not what the Hadith says. That's not what Muhammad said in his last sermon. He said there's no difference between red and black. White was never mentioned. What does that tell you? So I'm saying to you that your society, your culture is stupid. I'll be honest with you. Straight up Arabs, straight up Indians, Pakistanis, Persians. Your cultures are stupid. Because you accept these ideas. You take these ideologies and you don't fight against them and argue with them. White folks never came to you and said, we're better than you because we're white. They didn't have to. Subconsciously, they taught this on television, and you bought it, hook, line, and sinker, even though Muhammad Wasallam said that there's nobody who's better than anyone else on account of their origins. Without mentioning white, he mentioned black and red, which is very telling because it is the non-whites who call themselves whites but are actually more like the reds who are considering themselves better than black folks, while the actual white folks who accept Islam are throwing this aside. Your culture's stupid. See, we already know our culture's screwed up and needs to be changed. We already got that. We got that memo. You all ain't figured it out yet. Pakistani culture sucks. It's a terrible uh, thing to try to mix with Islam. Arab culture sucks. If it wasn't, if, if, if I could embody it in a physical object, and showing my privates was not forbidden, I would embody it in a physical object and pull my privates out and pee on it in front of you and dare you to say something about it. Your culture sucks. Islam doesn't. But the problem is, you all hold the culture even when it's against Islam. Now when black folks do it, and we do it, and I, I say that to us too, your culture sucks, blood, but I ain't talking to black folk right now. I've already had this conversation with black folks. The conversation I had with them is different. I'm telling you all now, on the internet, so everybody can hear it. Right now, while I'm in an Arab country, your culture sucks. You need to change your culture to be more like your religion. We all do. None of us is immune from this. But my people are starting to get that message. We're starting to understand. And our youth are starting to do this, and we're not listening to the elders when they come with that foolishness. What about your culture, boy? Well, you know, when it jobs, when it agrees with revelation, we're going to hold the culture. When it doesn't agree with revelation, F the culture. That's what we're starting to say to, to our elders. And a lot of our elders are saying there's hope for the youth because of this. You Arab elders, 
you know doggone well your youth are now starting to question some aspects of the culture. But when your youth want to throw aside the culture and replace it with the religion, which is right, you all don't support them. So that's why I'm going to sit up here insulting you like this categorically. You suck. You don't even support marriage. You'd rather see homosexuality lower your country's population than to see the youth get married without paying attention to your biases based on tribe and nationality and skin color. And when it comes to skin color, for the most part, many of you want to see your grandchildren as white as possible. And you ain't white. You just want to become white. It's not lost on me that you want to be. You want your grandchildren to be closer to the exact color of the oppressors of the planet while their own children don't really even want to pass on that color to their, to, to, to their grandkids and kids. In other words, whites who become Muslim are not even looking to have white children anymore. But here you are trying to get the whitest you can find for your kids to marry because you want your grandkids to become white. Because you want your people to become white. It's not lost on me that you pick the oppressor to resemble. You breeding yourselves like cattle and sheep in order to whiten your people as much as possible. They did that in the, in the Dominican Republic. It didn't work. Black blood kept popping up and popping up. It, it, it couldn't work. It failed. Well, now you're trying to do this stuff, and you're Muslim. So that's why I said these things I say about you. You need to come up to a two. You need to come to an understanding. Don't ever again try to stop a discussion about racism between Muslims. When it happens, don't try to stop it. Let the discussion go on because these are things that the Muslim world needs to hammer out. And it starts with discussion. And it starts with taking turns talking instead of everybody just trying to interrupt everybody else. That's what it's going to take. And right now, you Arabs and Pakistanis ain't learned that yet. Black folk ain't either, but they're starting to. They're getting there. Y'all still got, y'all have yet to even get started learning this. There are going to be times when you know what somebody much darker than you and poorer than you it's going to be right and your butt's wrong. You need to shut the hell up and listen. I don't say any of these things that I say with hatred. No, I take that back. I do hate the racist. I hate them like I, I hate them like I hate the Israelis. A racist Muslim who doesn't want to be corrected. I hate you. As far as I'm concerned, you a Kafir once you know this and you don't want to be corrected. I can't stand you. I wish you would die a painful death. So no, I take it back. I say this with all the hatred in the world against any Muslim who has found out that they're racist and won't change. We don't need you anymore. May Allah kill you. Because when the guidance came to you, you rejected it. Racism is more haram than eating a pork sandwich. Because there could be an emergency and you got to eat that hog to stay alive to get some more food later to keep you alive that is halal in every circumstance. <laughs> There's such a thing as, as an emergency. Racism is not allowed even in an emergency. Pretending to be racist so that somebody else doesn't blow your brains out is different from actually becoming a racist. It's not allowed. Only pretending like it is allowed in an emergency, not actually becoming one. So no, it's more haram than eating a pork sandwich. May Allah kill you because you won't accept the guidance and the correction. And if I find out that one of you is like that individually, I'm going to get in your face and call you a kafir. And see what you do about it. The only proper reaction. Because there are going to be other black men that are going to start doing this too. And some men who ain't black. The only proper reaction is to say, I'm sorry, I was wrong. I should not have been this way. And I need to turn over a new leaf and change. And if somebody were to react that way, I'd take back everything I said and I'd shake his hand. And I'd stay on his side. But that's not what the Muslims are doing as a whole right now. Tunisia, in the south, a couple got married. The man's black, the woman is not white, but she's called white. What the hell is that in the first place? Fact is, you call yourself white, you ain't. What kind of stupidity is this? So she's called white. So her family rejects her, but the black man's family doesn't reject him. What the hell does that tell you? Black people don't need to be corrected about racism. We ain't the racists of the world. Second thing this tells you. 
The town, in that town in Tunisia, segregated the bus system. One bus for black children, another bus for white children. The black community did not ask for this. Tunisia has a problem with racism and it's not black people discriminating against white people. Black Tunisians, I'm telling you now, start discriminating against anybody calling themselves white. That's the first thing. If a Tunisian calls himself white, just he calls himself white, not Arab, not Berber, just white, not red, not brown, not bronze, white. He calls himself white, discriminate against him. Because Arabs aren't white. Berbers aren't white. Tunisians are a mix of them. Africans from the tropics ain't white. The North Africans who are Berbers ain't white. The North Africans who are Arabs ain't white. White is white. European is white. You got Italians and Spaniards that ain't white. So how you gonna sit up here on, on Mama Africa soil talking about some I'm white? Discriminate against them. They call themselves white, don't let them marry your kids. Straight up. If they say I'm not black, okay, well, maybe you don't know about your black ancestry, but yes, because you don't know. But they say they're white, that's a different story. Discriminate against them. We don't need them. The fact that they call themselves something they're not they call them, they name themselves after the oppressor that they don't even belong to. That tells you something. That's a hypocrite. He's either really stupid and ignorant, or he's a goddamn hypocrite. Full blown. One of them too. If he's ignorant, they don't need to marry your kids because they're ignorant. If the same goes for a woman. Talking about some, I'm white. Your son wants to marry you. Slap your son. The hell you want to marry a wannabe white person for? She ain't even white. She calls herself that. That tells you where her mind is, son. You marry her, I'm going to beat the shit out of you. That's what we need to start doing. And you black folks in Ghana, straight up, one of my mans from Saudi Arabia went to visit. Now, my man, he's black. He's not officially considered to be black, but he's black. I was the one that broke the news to him. I pointed out certain traits and told them, you can't have these traits without African ancestry. And you all have it in the peninsula, although all of you don't say you're black, but y'all should. But anyway, that's beside the point, my black brother. So now he's more aware, he's conscious, he's woke. He went on a trip to Ghana when his colleague, who's also black, same thing, didn't know he was black till I told him, you can't have these traits without being black. They went to Ghana for their job. They came back, they told me, you Ghanaians, you, you sit up here, call yourselves slaves in Arabic. What is this? You don't call yourselves slaves. And don't sit up here and say that every color lighter than yours is more beautiful. Stop that mess. That's self-hatred. Your jet black complexion is fine just as it is. Your nappy beady hair is fine just like it is. Your big old wide rainforest noses are beautiful just like they are. Them big old lips where you could shake your head once and kiss a classroom are fine like they are. Your big old feet leaving holes in the ground instead of footprints are fine just like they are. Your black African tropical self is beautiful like you are. It is not a curse. It's not a disadvantage. I don't want to hear you all talking like that. If you keep believing this way, then that means you, you calling God a racist. You saying that God made you inferior to everybody else if you keep thinking this way. Now, if you're going to say that God is a racist and he made you inferior, you a Kafir. See, this racism always inevitably leads to kufr. Directly or indirectly, that's the problem with it. And nobody wants to confront it. I'm not making this stuff up. Sure, you could have said this. But the masses of the Muslims don't want to hear it. And you and Ghana, y'all sit up talking about yourselves like this. Calling yourselves slaves. And acting like every complexion lighter than yours is more beautiful. Screw that. They might be beautiful, but not more beautiful than yours. If you can go outside at 12 p.m. in the afternoon and the birds go to sleep thinking it's nighttime, that's beautiful. Don't apologize for it. If you donate blood to the hospital and they turn around and sell it to Chevron and pay all their bills off, be proud of that. You owe nobody an apology for that. If you go to the blood bank to donate blood and they say, what blood type do you have? And you say, I don't know. And they test it and come back and say, your blood type is Penn's oil, motor oil, 10W30. That's excellent. Be proud of that. Be proud of your big old wide nose and big lips. Be proud of your heavy voice that scares white men when you get angry. Be grateful for that. Black women, you too. Be proud of your beady nappy hair. You don't owe anybody uh, to, to straighten your hair. If you're Muslim, they, your hair ain't their business anyway. So having said this, Muslims, let this be known. 
those of you who know who I am in real life, be careful what you say about black, about dark skinned people in general. Be careful. Because if I hear any one of you say something about black people and it's not, or dark skinned people, and it's not favorable on the basis of their skin color, I don't mean you personally insult one dark skinned person because of something they did. I'm not talking about an actual individual moral insult. But if you can say anything about black folk, or dark skinned people in general on the basis of them being dark or you even so much as say anything that that hints at you thinking that white is normal in some standard to meet like it's an example for us I'm gonna call you out on it I'm gonna tell you insult white folks now you would uh, you now you in a catch-22 because if you don't insult them you a rat's ass racist and if you do insult them now you at least you an equal opportunity racist but I'm going to make you know that you're a racist. It's just a question of what kind of racist you're going to be. And if you show me the wrong type of racist, I'm going to resort to violence. Because I have no forgiveness for a Muslim who does this. Somebody that says they ain't Muslim but they racist, we can avoid each other. I don't have to be around them. They're not going to come and pray next to me one day. Because they ain't Muslim. You talk about you Muslim, but you got these ideas in your head. You're going to come pray next to me one day. You might get in front of me start praying. I'm like, uh-uh, I'm not praying behind you. It's not happening. I'm going to call you out. And it's going to be very uncomfortable for a lot of you. If you don't question what you've been taught and question your assumptions, I'm going to make you feel uncomfortable. And that's real. And I'm not apologizing for what I do. Because if you say, I'm a butthole, if you say that I'm cruel or I'm anything, and this, that, and you can insult me, I have the right to forgive that. You insult victims of oppression, I don't have the right to forgive that. That's a category. So if you think you're going to protect your culture from my insults, okay, well, I'm going to protect my race and other races from your white supremacist ideas because you're Muslim. Or you say you're Muslim. We ain't got time for you. The world needs an end to this stuff. And we don't need to turn the other cheek type of end either. Well, you forgive them. No, no, no. We need one of them. Okay, so you're going to... Uh, uh, we need one of these ends to racism that's like, okay, you point guns at Europe and you say, you will no longer interfere in our affairs or we will just wipe you the hell out. That's, that, that's the kind of end to racism we need. You no longer tell anybody else what to do outside of Europe. Matter of fact, you don't even have authority over black people living in Europe anymore. No more. Try to exercise them if you want. We'll wipe you the hell out. That's the kind of end to racism we need. Australia, you pay reparations. How much? Your whole goddamn economy, your treasury. You empty it out and divide it amongst the aborigines. Oh, we'll wipe you the hell out. And we'll take it and give it to them. That's the kind of end of racism we need. Well, where's that going to leave us? You deserve to be enslaved by them. You've been sitting up here eating the benefits of killing them off and enslaving them. <laughs> Time for the shoe to be on the other foot. Or you can leave and go back to Europe. Well, where did you leave us in Europe? Not a goddamn thing that you didn't have before. That's the kind of end of racism the world needs. You walk around talking about let's forgive white folk, but you calling black people slaves, we don't need you. You're going to hold us back. You're bad for future generations of Muslims. I hope I make no apologies for anything that I've said. I hope that what I've said has been of benefit. Assalamu alaikum.